On the 12th of February 2016, Morgan Bauer flew from her home in South Dakota to Atlanta, Georgia. She went there with the plan of cleaning the house of someone she met on Craigslist, and in return for the services, she would be allowed to stay there for free until she found a job. This agreement didn't work out, and she had to pick up shifts at a local club, but Morgan only worked there for a single week before she would disappear from the face of the earth. So, what really happened to Morgan Bauer? First, let's go back to where it all began, Aberdeen, South Dakota, where Morgan grew up. She was born on the 13th of April 1996 in Tennessee, but most of her life was spent in Aberdeen. By all accounts, her childhood was fine, and she did well in school, but opted not to go to college, and instead had ambitious plans to make a life for herself somewhere new and she wasn't going to let anything stop her. The 19-year-old Morgan told her mother, Sherry, about her plans to move to a new city. She said that she was planning to stay with two roommates and that she was leaving very soon. Her mother didn't see more than moon with the idea, but there wasn't anything she could do about it. Shortly after, Morgan caught a ride to Minneapolis, where she boarded a flight destined for her new home. February 12th. Morgan arrives in Atlanta. She had lied to her mother. She had no roommates planned, but she had managed to convince someone from Craigslist to let her stay with them until she could find a home. She was going to perform all the chores around the house, and this seemed to be going well, until the second day when the man she was staying with made a drastic U-turn. Her belongings were found at the front door, and there was a note that he had left telling her not to return to the house. She didn't exactly have any ground to stand on, so she didn't argue her case and instead left, desperately searching for a solution. With $20 in hand that she had borrowed, she managed to move between motels each night, but that wasn't exactly sustainable. She managed to get herself some work in the Gainesville Club as an exotic dancer. Not exactly the work she was hoping for, but she didn't really have a choice. On the 25th of February, she was spotted in another gentleman's club, a club called Tease, attempting to get some work, but the manager declined her as she was lacking the necessary paperwork. But this is when things would take a turn. By all accounts, Morgan was incredibly active on social media. She made constant posts to Snapchat, Facebook and Instagram, so you can understand how concerning it was when the posts stopped. In the late hours of the 25th, Morgan was spotted leaving the club she worked at with two people, a dancer and the dancer's boyfriend. She was seen at a local gas station shortly after, but that was the last time that anyone laid eyes on the woman. Her friends hadn't heard from her since her last post, and her mother had gotten into a disagreement with her prior to her leaving, so she hadn't noticed anything strange either. On March 12th, when Sherry was made aware of the lack of activity from her daughter, she travelled to Atlanta and filed a missing persons report, and quickly, the search for the missing woman began. The investigation got underway, and the first thing that the police chose to do was to ping her mobile phone. It was last active on the 27th of February, and it was conveniently in the location where the two people she was seen leaving with lived. They both quickly became the prime suspects, but after carrying out a search, nothing was discovered and her phone was never located. It never pinged again either. Even though they had no evidence, they weren't going to let the couple go without an interrogation. They were interviewed, and although they initially denied having been with the girl that night, they quickly realised that there was no point in lying, and admitted to dropping her off at the gas station where she was last seen. They told police that after they dropped her off, she got into another vehicle, but investigators tried to find CCTV footage of this occurring and came up with nothing. This wasn't the only concerning information about the couple, as they had allegedly made concerning posts to their Facebook accounts around the time that the woman went missing. They seemed to be a number one reason as to why neither of them were cleared as suspects for the years that followed. Despite the information surrounding the couple, investigators had no evidence that warranted keeping them in custody and they had to be let free after the interviews. The investigation came to a halt when one month into the search, Morgan's sister announced to the world that her sister was in fact alive. This came as a shock to everyone, especially after the sister claimed that Morgan left her home to free herself from their manipulative and bipolar mother. The friend who had initially noticed that something was up with Morgan had also come forward to claim that she believed she had been speaking to Morgan over text message. So, with all this information suddenly coming to light, 
Everyone calmed down their search efforts, believing that the woman had willingly disappeared. The police even stated that there was no evidence of foul play, saying that they didn't believe the girl was in immediate danger. As we'd come to find out, this was not the case. In 2023, an Instagram post made by Morgan would be brought to the attention of the police. It was posted on February 26, 2016, a day after the woman had gone missing. The video showed Morgan walking in a park, but disturbingly, there was a man following close behind her. This completely changed the investigation, with the police having to go back and analyse all of the details they thought had been set in stone. This wasn't the only information that would be brought forward last year, as a short while later, the police were tipped off about a property in Georgia. The information was so promising that they managed to secure a search warrant and their search led to the location of items of interest. The property is located less than a mile away from where Morgan's phone was last pinged, adding more credibility to any evidence they would find. And they found enough, as a few days after the search, two suspects were arrested in connection with the disappearance. And finally, the truth about what happened to Morgan was discovered. The girl was dropped off at the gas station, and sometime on February 26th, she was picked up by Jonathan Warren and Caitlin Gobel. The pair strangled her and cut the body into pieces, before attempting to burn the remains in an attempt to cover up their horrific crime. Warren then admitted to performing acts on the body, adding an extra charge to the disturbing list. For all this, Warren was finally sentenced in January of this year to life in prison without parole after pleading guilty to murder, tampering with evidence, concealing death, and necrophilia. Gobel has been charged with concealing death and tampering with evidence, but she is yet to be sentenced for her crimes. So, finally, we have a concrete answer as to what actually happened to Morgan, a fate that no one could have expected. But it does make you wonder, who did Morgan's sister think she was speaking to if it wasn't really the missing person. By the point that she claims to have been texting her, she had already passed. Although we do have the conclusion, there are details that still stand out, and questions to be asked over the police investigation, which some people believe was not as smooth as it could have been. What we can take from all of this though, is that the two disturbing individuals who ended the life of an innocent girl will likely spend the rest of their lives behind bars, a fitting fate for such twisted killers. <laughs>